Hey guys, welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. I decided I'm going to do the DLCs at this point. And, um, yeah, we're going to start with the first DLC The Crown of the Sunken King? But the one centered around Shulva. And uh, so yeah, this is behind the rotten boss fight. And we saw this before, this little shrine with snakes or serpents on it, with their heads cut off. Or their tails, yeah, their heads cut off. I don't know if it's related to... <clears throat> um, like, they all have the same shape, so I don't know how it's related to the DLC, but there are three of them, and there are three DLCs. And anyway, there's these uh, uh, etchings around here, which I said we would read uh, last time, so. Forbidden is the path to the ancient king's domain. And I wonder... There was a lot of work done um, with the... Uh, and I don't know that I have it, no, with the uh, titanite slabs, and they look, appeared to be runes on them, which might have had meaning. These don't look like runes to me, but I'm not a rune expert, uh, but I wonder if someone's tried to translate these. Trespassers will face adversity befitting a, a monarch. With water dry and path amiss, woeful temptation is dismissed. The city of the sunken king sleeps, as does the dragon within. Uh, and I don't think I have... Oh, I have the Archdrake shield, not the, the one that they use. Um, that talked about the sunken king um, and how the Archdrake, how Lindelt might be related to it. I would even go so far as to assume that where we're going to be going is what became Lindelt. Um, the other thing that we should mention, I suppose, is that I kind of went with a different build for these DLCs. Um, I reallocated my points again, and I uh, kind of went with this um, Drake Keeper's Great Hammer, and um, doing the old ironclad armor that I got from the Forest of the Fallen Giants, and pretty much Cyan stuff. So... Um, yeah, I'm a fan of it, and I'm still kind of learning some of the, you know, the move sets that I like, so uh, we'll be kind of <laughs> learning together um, what works with this build and what doesn't. But let's examine this uh, pool of water. Be cool if they had a cinematic here. So we get transported, uh, similar to um, the Dark, Dark Souls 1 DLC, they, um, they transport you back in time to something that happened long ago. Now, as I think I mentioned previously, um, interesting, it's like a, almost like a uh, Lord Vessel here. These, the presence of these um, statues kind of allow players to play the DLC if they haven't purchased it. So you can, like, get summoned into someone else's game and, and play it. So, let's analyze this. There's a sun on the middle. The top image appears to be perhaps a dragon. I don't know, it's got two horns, but it also looks like it has its face cut off, like those Titanite demons. Second image looks like uh, a battle. And the third image is definitely a dragon. And then we definitely have 
some sort of runes up there. Interesting. So now, because I have one of these, I can't remember. Yeah, the Dragon Talon, most likely. Yeah. Legend has it that in the deepest reaches of the Black Gulch, behind a door locked from the inside, is a magnificent, magnificent uh, city built for a great slumbering dragon. And it dates to ancient times. Alright. So let's check out Shulva. It's an interesting statue. I can't really see anything in particular about it. There is kind of a female associated with this area, but it doesn't look like her in any way. But we can see some bright stone in here, unharvested. And some spiders, spider holes and spider webs, I don't know. And then a great introduction to this area. I believe you can see like everything that you do from just this spot. You can see though down there some enemies. And there's a whole area. And we can see the uh, the main uh, area that you get to once uh, beating. Uh, well, I guess the whole DLC kind of takes place in this big thing, just different different points at different points. There's the optional boss, which I won't be doing this playthrough. Um, and we can hear kind of like a snoring. And we come and see this dragon here, which looks like it was impaled with something. There was a slumbering dragon, and he was slumbering, although he's not. He definitely uh, woke up. So, yeah, our first goal is to get over to this lower bridge down here and enter into this area here. Um, this uh, is a shortcut here that we're going to open up later. So, all right. So now we're going to meet the fodder enemy that we play in this area. The Shulva Sanctum Knights. hit these, oops, <laughs> which can move objects in this level. And this makes this level very dynamic. And I think it's, it's one of the best levels that From ever designed. going to need a bow at some point here. Oops. Right, they were shooting at me. So of course they're all standing by a thing which you can turn on.
doesn't kill him in one hit, okay. Gotta take these bow guys out. One thing I have noticed about this weapon is that you do you do face a direction, so you have to be really precise. Like you won't just attack where you're like this. If I go like this, and like I can can easily move away from him, so I gotta be careful with that. Okay. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here, and you have to kind of manipulate this uh, level uh, in various ways. Like there's a middle section that you can go down there. You can ride in on this. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done that actually. That's not what I was trying to do. And then we meet this enemy. Kind of one of the uh, level up, <laughs> like the second layer level of soldiers. I meet a few of those guys. Poison stone. I guess that makes sense. Oops. <laughs> Try to parry these guys too. It's got a really good critical, but it, it's the arrows that really get me. to do is this. Get this and then oh gosh. Then you can kinda go on this the dark quartz ring. Is that just the guy in there? Okay. Sanctum Soldier Gauntlet. I was hoping we could start reading about these guys soon. Gauntlets of the Sanctum Soldiers improves the effect of poison weapons. These gauntlets are corroded by the poison of the slumbering dragon, making it difficult to discern their original shape. Um. I guess now that's permanently up. 
So I'm going to try and go up on that. Looks like they might all be slumbering. Maybe there's something about this area. Oh yeah, and they give you a longbow plus seven here in case in this in your build you don't. And this will put me over. And I'm I am doing the lightest shield. Um okay, well we might just use that for uh use it at, you know, times that we need it. Oh, come on. Yeah, so there's definitely a poison association with this area. Which makes sense, because we found it in the Black Gulch. Um... I'm going to try to go back and get that other item. Now these guys have a... Uh, oh, great. They have a kind of corrosion thing, which we know kind of comes from the land of Hugo. But I don't know... Hugo is a desert town. Or it's in the desert. And this certainly doesn't look like desert, so I don't know if it's just another bug or ant that, you know, has a uh, corrosive quality or if it's, if they're related in any way. And they drop golden fruit balm, which I guess is new, right? Can't remember. Oh, I guess old growth balm might be new too. A balm extracted from a rare plant. This special fragrant oil affects the mind, freeing a fleeting sense of empowerment. So yeah, what's cool about these is that they temporarily increase like a base stat. It's it's pretty crazy. Could be useful to uh, do some. do some tasks. All right, let's see here. Yeah, there's something down there. Okay. So you can get to this right away from the beginning. Um, you know, if you have a bow, you can shoot that. And then you can... Okay, so why did that not parry? Maybe this has terrible parry frames. I just like the way it looks with the with the whole uh, fashion souls going on. Somewhere a bug comes up. Yeah, there he is. Poison bite ring plus one, which makes sense due to where we are. And then we can, well, I guess we'll just go back down here. But we could drop off and get at the beginning of the level there. Okay, and now I guess we have a shortcut in a sense. Um, I believe you can hit this with a, like you can drop down and yeah, you can shoot up like there. I don't know why they attempted to make it look like you like can't hit it from down there to make it a shortcut. But, it is a shortcut now, which is good. So yeah, if I roll or hit these, they will uh, make my armor um, degrade. Alright, let's take care of this fool.
So these also like move things like this, so you can kind of navigate around the level better, which is nice. I went on vacation <coughs> for a week here, so I haven't really played uh, Dark Souls for a while, and I'm probably just getting I hear someone I'm getting the timing all wrong or whatever. Okay. A mace, a mace wielded by the Sanctum soldiers. This mace was corrupted by poison when Sin, the slumbering dragon, awoke. So now we know the slumbering dragon's name is Sin. A mere mortal would be as asphyxiated by the poison emitted when wielding this mace. But for the noxious sanctum soldiers, this fact matters none. So that's interesting. Does it make you... I actually don't know. I've never played with this. Does it give you poison? Yeah. So it gives you poison when whatever. So if you have a strong poison build, you and it probably delivers poison when hit, too. So it makes it good if you have the moonlight butterfly here the butterfly armor and that would probably be a pretty that'd be a nice build to do all right so I got both of these moved out so now I can go around um, I wonder what the, where to get that item This level really, or this, it's really nice how they look, set up this level so that you have, you can like open up these paths and then like in this case, you know, you drop down and now you can't get back so you have to go through this area in order to, I should probably put, I actually don't know where I put this on my bar, fire bombs on here so that I can like get rid of these and stuff. guys out. Oops. Okay, get away. I want to come from down there too. So yeah, I guess they have a state where they're just like emitting that. Okay. <laughs> These are really dead. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna do a repair powder because I just wanna do a straight shot to this next bonfire and it's gonna be a while. Oh, that's gold pine resin, what am I doing? Alright, so now here's a way that we can get back, and we have this view up here. There's an Elizabeth mushroom here for, in my opinion, no reason. And there's all these guys over here. And, and I think this is meant to... Let me uh, equip a bow here, and maybe take some of these guys out. Uh, do I not have a ton of arrows? I mean, I guess I just have some. Not sure what it means to not have the... To, oh, wow. 
That does nothing. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's the wielding issue. Um, I don't have that either. Um, okay, well then this this effectively is not gonna work. I'll just use this for. I'm gonna get this up. Ugh. I'm trying not to get hit by this arrow here. that's a hard one to hit from anywhere but here. But I'm not actually sure what that gives you, so we'll play around with that. Alright. So now, yeah, there's this guy here. Um, which... I don't know if you can really see, but there's a bunch of those those statues, which means they long predate the Rotten and the Black Gulch, I would guess. But anyway, I don't know if you can see, there's a turtle underneath him. And you can kill that turtle, but um, it's kind of hard to hit with weapons. So, um, oops. we're just going to run by him and potentially get poisoned here. Cracked red eye orbs here. Alright, I suppose it probably would be wise to equip this, but I don't plan on getting poison all that much. There's another one of those guys. Um, so. Through this gauntlet. So I'm gonna do this like the normal way, like the way that I think they were trying to get you to do. But um, you know, you can essentially just hit this and then jump up on here, and then there's a bonfire up here. But we'll just go through the normal way, which I'll probably like eat my words on because I'm probably gonna like get hit by all these. shot or whatever so got to heal this really is like a terrible gauntlet I don't know why I struggle with it all the time but there's always these people on the ground and then you gotta run up and hit these guys I'm playing it super safe. Oh, come on. Right. Come on. Yeah, see, that's the thing right there. Like, with the weapons I normally use, that would never happen. So that's just something I have to get used to. And if there, there's these things here, but it, I feel like they don't really help all that much because you're constantly engaging in battle with someone, so they certainly help like the run-up, but they're always going to approach you. Ooh, three tinkling, twinkling titanium. I guess that puts them down as well, so like it's easy to do a follow-up. All right, so now let us do this. It's an area down there. I'm gonna go through this whole thing. 
Um, so yeah, one area, I guess we can do it here. Um, I believe you fall down and then that just gives you access to the thing to shoot when you normally don't, so you're just meant to fall down. And then it's there. Oops, I forgot that. Oh yeah, I guess there is a couple of these guys. Oh, and then it... Oh, okay, that's really clever. Alright, so I'm just gonna have to get through this. Oops. Get a notched whip plus seven. Well, I think we had the notched whip, whip before. And then promised walk of peace, which is really interesting to be here. And then of course this tree. Um, I can't do anything with this guy, and he just sits there. I officially don't know what this is. Or why it's here, but let's read Promised Walk of Peace. A hex created from an ancient miracle of unknown origin slows the walking pace of its caster and those in the vicinity. To stand and glare at one another, steaming with ire and wrath, but without making a move, such is the nature of peace. Uh, and yeah, this was obviously the um, Tranquil Walk of Peace. Um, in the original game, which was a, it was a miracle, but it was not a miracle of the gods. And it makes sense that since it's associated with peace, that it's also associated with, um, the dark. And it is now a hex. And it obviously takes, um, takes more faith than intelligence to cast it, so. Alright, well let's go back. I wonder, I suppose... Uh, fire bombs would work against these guys. Let's kill. Let's try to kill one of them. Okay, can you not lock on? Okay. Wow, that did not work at all. Yeah, they're they're hard to they're hard to hit. So. this place because I just skipped everything. Some Lloyd's talismans here. Looks like there's a couple of these here. Um, again, you can just walk onto these, but I don't, yeah, I'm not really sure what they're trying to do here. I wonder if, like, does smashing the ground, like, do anything? No. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing I was gonna say is, I don't know if, um, the DLC has changed anything from the original. Um, oh, I guess you can hit that and it just blocks the guy from being able to shoot you. Huh. Yeah, I don't really know if that's worth it. Um, but again, I don't know if anything's different from the original. Um, there is an item on one of these, but it's just like a quartz ring plus three, I think. I mean, one of the quartzes. And, um, yeah, I'm going to skip it. Tower of Prayer. 
Okay. So. Dried root. Is that new? Root of a perennial herb native to the south. Restores HP for an extended duration. Wild animals abhor the pungent odor of this root, but clerics on pilgrimage are keenly aware of the value of its power, uh, powerful medicinal effects. Looks like a mushroom. Similar effect to Elizabeth's mushroom. mushroom. And there was a lot of use for uh, mushrooms for people that traveled, like in real life. Non Dark Souls world. Um, yeah, I think we might go down there, but I, I think I want to go from this angle. Yeah, see, that doesn't poise break them, which I'm surprised with. And I lost like all my health there. Sanctum Mace. Again, I should uh, fix the dragon ring though too. Um, yeah, and there's this too. Um, that's actually a different item, I believe. So, but we're gonna skip them for now. Alright, and these were rusted coins, I believe. I remember that because I used to I used to farm things a lot, so I knew where all the rusted coins were. Alright, so now So they're doing every dragon trope. Uh, with this DLC, the dragon trope of what happened in the original base game and then what happened in the DLC. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one item was, as I said, but... Um, there's a sorcery over here. Focus souls, it could be a hex, I guess. An ancient sorcery of Sholva, the Sanctum City, fires a focus beam of souls. It sounds like it might be related to White Dragon Breath, but I don't know. I haven't fired it. It takes 60 intelligence. <laughs> That's why I've never fired it. The development of sorceries was stunted in Sholva, as they were considered taboo. Even so, they were there were some occasional gems created by a group of nameless enthusiasts. So, I believe that it's very possible that um, um, this could be Lindelt. Now, here's the thing. Like, if it's in the location where the Black Culture is, and the Black Culture is in Majula, which is Drang Lake, and was Olafus, and was Vinheim, you know, I mean, it's possible that Sholva was one of the Thing, and one is one of the things, and it's just unrelated to everything. I'm just interested why the Archdrake sect is so tied to this uh, area. I mean, with the exception of them not physically being present um, here, like you don't you don't come across Archdrake, um, whatever. Um, the arc, you just don't come across those enemies. But I mean, these are all just guesses, and just the way that like. I don't know. I think it would make sense if things worked. And I know that Lindelt is a, a current like area in the world of Drang Lake. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense that this was uh, Lindelt. But I guess, I mean, we might have traveled away to a place that later becomes Lindelt. That's, I guess, what I'll say. But, you know, sorceries were forbidden here, which would make sense for Lindelt being a very miracle based area which means that it could possibly be an origin of Thurland 
So maybe, again, that's these are just the connections I'm trying to make. Um, however, I don't think they give you any um, definitive thing. But as soon as we enter the Dragon Sanctum, we start to hear a singer. Well, of course, it's locked. Now we have the mechanic of the second area, which is these things that you can hit in and... and cause things to happen. All right, so this is uh, another cool mechanic here. So what there's an, a thing that sort of looks like you know a, a, like an invisible spirit, or like those things in the shaded woods. Um, that's you know there, and it's actually tied with these bodies. So you can break the bodies, and then they become real and then you can actually do damage to them. But I like to come in and get rid of those first so that I can make the drop on them. I can't believe I can do this without that one noticing. Very good. Makes that easier. This is the third level of Sanctum Knights that we're finding. But it looks like they might be spirits in some way, and that, you know, these are the, the. I should probably have looked at these. I'll try to. There's more in the level. I'll try to keep one alive to, like, actually look at it. Um, I'm going to assume that none of these are mimics. Destructive Great Arrow. Are those new arrows, actually? Uh, I guess the arrows are here. Great Arrows with an intricately crafted tips designed to destroy equipment. Bravery, to, yeah. I guess we already had those. But it would make sense that they had them here because they were fighting the dragon. Um... So then they put the Katarina Helm in here. And this is funny for those playing the game at the time of the release or whatever because um, <laughs> you could farm this in the game through a Dark Spirit and Bonfire Aesthetics. And for the people that spent all that time trying to farm this so they get this weapon, they give them all in the DLCs. And it's really funny. One interesting thing you can see here um, which I didn't really talk about in the first game, is that there's like a little latch on the left-hand side of the helmet and a hinge on the right-hand side, and that's how this opens up so they can eat. So you just like unpop it and then it swings out like that. I don't know. Kind of cool. Um, an odd helmet shaped like an onion. This helmet appears rather absurd, but it its multi-face multi construction is in fact quite practical as it effectively deflects physical attacks. The old tales speak of brave Katarina knights wearing this helmet as they rushed courageously into battle. Well, it's interesting. That is probably, I, don't, I can't recall, but I think that might be the one reference to a land that was part of the first like even they, they say like you know this dragon ring was from a, a land that was on this very spot so they don't even say Vinheim there oh Titanite Slab maybe we can look at this real quick so yeah um, yeah it's hard to see on this image but there's like runes on it, so people have transcribed those, but anyway. Um, and then we have this kind of 
lithogram or something, or lithograph, I mean, and um, we kind of saw something like this in the Undead Crypt, uh, and we'll see one in a boss room later. I think it's probably the same one. Probably just depicts the people of Sholva. And then we can see here that um, they're, so similar to these um, tables here with these dead knights, um, they're, I think they were also stood up here. Um, and you can see this guy's um, swords. Um, and then, but, and you can also see where their back was touching. So, there's a space for three, for four of these guys. Then we get a variation on this enemy, which is kind of, I don't like all that much. So that they poison you while you attack them. Oops. Okay. So those are two of those guys. Maybe two of these here? I don't know. There's another one. There's a trap, looks like. So there's one down there as well. And there's some here. I didn't even see it. <laughs> oh yeah, so here's the other two. I don't know. Now the other residents here in uh, in Sholva are these black, uh, dark magic sorcerers. It looks like uh, pursuers. Looks like they have the witch tree bell vine or something. I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, like here's one of the mechanics of this area is like, as I said, those things that you press. Yeah, there it is. Those things that you press in, sometimes they can appear on the wall or the ceiling. This is trapped. Yeah, it looks like it's a but I remember these being pretty good rewards. I guess maybe just this one. I think this is like five twinkling titanite and and like a bunch of petrified dragon bone. Yeah, it's crazy. Alright. Well, let's go... Okay, now this definitely looks like... a real person. Swings multiple times. It's good to know.
Oh, that kind of actually sucks. Because, um... One thing that I do like about beating this in one go is um, the when Sin comes and destroys these guys, these guys are hard to like run through. Ugh. I really don't like how they have like infinite poise with that. <laughs> and I have zero. I guess it doesn't matter because in this case I'm doing kind of a run through of everything and not just a, um, a speed run or like, you know, getting through it quick. Now, I'm not sure if I can go down here and those guys won't come. I'm pretty sure they're going to come. So I guess the question is whether I can get past these guys without them noticing me. Which is probably the case. Oh wait, I didn't get poisoned. Somehow. Now I might be able to get by without those guys seeing me, but I guess I should get my souls. <laughs> okay. hurt them, that's good. Oh, it goes off multiple times, unlike Dark Souls 1. Interesting fact about those in Dark Souls 1, if you didn't know, notice, is that those traps do reset, like the one in Sin's Fortress, but you do have to, um, wait a long time, and so theoretically the whole resetting things with a, uh, with the bonfire is kind of like, like a bunch of time has passed or something, which I think is why, okay, that's not good. I think is why enemies respawn when you rest at a bonfire because it's like you know like a bunch of time has passed and they've kind of like I don't know they die and then they come back to life again all right so you can solve this little puzzle and maybe this guy comes down, I don't remember. This is the only part I don't like the design of because it's just like high walls and it's kind of like, what is this? So there's a door here. Ooh, repair powder. I always need more of that. And then there's this drop down here, which we'll jump over for now. And there's two things here. One thing we can hit is right there, which opens this door. And then one is right here. We'll need for what's inside here. Okay. Oh, 
weird. There's this cool thing, so if these guys run up, we can trigger this trap here. And then he'll get annihilated. Vine Ball. So it's just another one of these. Dexterity. So I could use that to actually do damage with arrows, I guess. Human Effigy. Okay, and so yeah, this was closed, but I, you know, I hit the thing over there and um, it opens it and it gives you a cool weapon. I don't see any teeth, but again, a lot more twinkling, a lot more petrified, I guess, you know, it's like late game area stuff where they're just trying to get you all your upgrade materials. And a new weapon. Puzzling Stone Sword. Which not only will we read, but we will play with. So it's just like a short sword. Uh, does a short sword have that moveset for the two-handed? I like that, the stabbing motion. Um, and then if you use it like a, uh, uh, the R2, it kind of comes apart. Interesting. Yeah, it comes apart like a whip. And has a whip move set for that. Oops. A sword with a segmented blade. When swung, its segments separate and the sword strikes in a whipping, whipping slash. Crafted with rare magnetic stone of remarkable strength, only found deep within the caves of the gutter. Which makes sense. Because that's where we are. So now, let us fall down in this area. You can hear those bugs. Oh, I guess I want it like this, so I'm gonna take, yeah, it's like that. Oh, I forget that I'd lose a ton of health just by falling down. Okay. for sure. Why do I feel like I'm constantly losing health? Because I am. These guys hit hard, I think, is the moral. Okay, what are they dropping? Alright. Life gems. Blackweed balm. Intelligence. I think it raises it by five. And I think it only, it doesn't scale like. It's not like if you. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go offline. I think for the next. Oh, it's an hour. Okay, well, guess we'll fight this fool and end the episode, aka die to this fool. He's hitting things, meaning that I think he thinks I'm being hidden or something. Flynn's ring. It's an interesting ring. I don't know what it looks like. Huh. 
Oh, it's just at the very end. So lowering equip load increases physical attack. And I forget how this works, because it works differently in Dark Souls 3, but I think literally, like, if you're not wearing a lot of armor and you're, like, your percentage is low, it, like, increases your physical attack, which is cool. Ring of Flynn, the infamous thief, utilizes the strength of the wind such that lower equip load proportionally increases physical attack. Flynn was known as a tiny fighter who packed a mighty punch. Even the most skilled warriors in the land failed to capture him. Alright, well I'm going to cut it here and uh, we can pick up from this place uh, next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.